Welcome to another haul video. This is my haul for Orlando Toying Comic Con. Yeah, I went to this con this year. I've wanted to go to this con for the past few years, but the problem was with only one day. This year it was two days. I had talked to people who run the place. The act, the people, the person who runs this place, runs this particular con. His name was Mike. He actually got um he had the quest permission to have this for two days now. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular con didn't have many guests. There was like maybe two celebrities there. One, of course, I got pitched with. I'm gonna show it off in a minute. And and this place was particularly very bizarrely designed. Like it was like going through a maze. Yeah, it was like kind of cramped. And a few of the now the one area I, I was kind of basically not surprised if I could take up this much room, and that was Neil Adams. Yeah, I'm not all that surprised he took up this he took up this much room in the place. But like three of the artists, like two of the artists, yeah, Clay Mann, Danny Coates, and Ryan Stankum. Uh, I can't remember the guy. I just forgot the guy's last name. Yeah, they're like in a, in a hallway, which is kind of weird. And Buzz, which he was the first guy I got signed from, he was like, so as you walk in, he was like off to the far left, like in a corner. He took up a decent amount of space, and in the case of the actor who actually got Ashton's picture up, whose name is Marcus Copan, he is no. Let's see if I pronounce. I think it's Copan, isn't it? Um, Copan. Yeah, Copan. Yeah, he's no worthy for playing Lucas, aka Time Force Blue from Power Rangers Time Force, and I got a picture with him. And no, I don't want to ask me how much I spent. It's well, my second most expensive thing I paid for. When I was there. Yep, here I am with Time Force Blue. And I talked to him for a bit where talked to him about how that this is my favorite Power Rangers season. Talk we pretty much talked a little bit we, a majority of what we talked about was Power Rangers related. A little bit about a film he was in, which was Scorpion King 2 Rise of a Warrior. And yeah, I talked to him for a good while. He was an absolutely fantastic person to talk to. And there was a few things to agree with me with, like the whole thing with Wes and Jen, they should have kissed, like, at the end of the season. He did agree that they should have done that. And I also brought up, like, like it was okay for Tommy and Kimberly to do that, but not these two. Yeah. yeah he even, even, even he agreed that <laughs> that should have happened. And we talked about the, his helm. They talked about the helmets that they wear. The fact it was tented. He did agree that I talked about it's like just true that, that that these helmets were tented. He says yes, they were definitely tented. We talked a little about Shadow Grid. We talked about some stuff related to the Sentai season. I didn't mention the name, but he knew I was talking about the Sentai season that was used for Time Force, and also the fact I did a review of it. That was a few years ago, anyways. And let's see. I think it was anything else. It was pretty much the majority of stuff we talked about was simply Power Rangers related. And it was a good conversation. He was the first ever Power Ranger I've ever actually met. Yeah. I didn't get anything signed for him, but like I said, all I got is picture. Alright. Here's our stuff I got. Okay, first I got this from Tala Kirkham. It's a split picture of the Batman Who Laughs and the Joker. It's a really good um, print. Excuse me. Next up is... My, for for my hero academia, we have All Might and Deku as Captain Marvel, which I thought this was a really good shirt, so I, I picked up. Yeah, I also found at the same booth, like someone had for JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone had a a shirt that had Dio Brando and Joto Akujo from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures Part Three: Star Wars Crusaders. Mm -hmm. Next up, I got. And I got this a couple different times with the same booth. The first six volumes of My Hero Academia. As of right now, I own every single volume that's been released so far here. Except for volumes 7 through 9. I have three more left now. Okay. Don't need that. Since it was a... Since it's called a Lantern Comic Con. Picked up a toy. And it's a pop figure of a racer head. Yep. I picked this up. Yeah, I know it was 20 bucks, but... 
I I don't have a problem with Racer Hades. Not my favorite characters, but I saw this was my hair. This was the, like the only my hair Academia figure there, so I figured though, just grab it. This I got for five dollars. Even the original cover price of this thing was eight dollars, and it's Marvel Tales featuring Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also got the Batman Who Laughs number one. <laughs> Got this a cover price. I've now I love this series so far. It's really good. I love Scott Snyder's work. This is actually one of the stuff I got signed. I got this signed by Ryan Stegman. This I picked up. The first issue of the relaunch for Captain Marvel, which came out just I think it was just a couple weeks ago. This came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by Kelly Thompson. Yeah, when I read this online, this was a really damn good issue. I'm like, as soon as I saw this thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm grabbing this thing. This I got signed by Danny Cotis, one of two things I got signed by him. Yep, this is uh, the first issue of the current volume of Guardians of the Galaxy. I believe this is volume five. Yeah, this is the fifth volume for the series. So actually, kind of in the way it's actually volume six, but this is kind of the fifth volume for the series. And and I did notice this when it came out that uh, if you look in the corner. Of this particular book, it says Legacy Number 151. I kind of wish that this book had it. Yeah. If you look here in the bottom, where normally where it is, yeah, it's not there. I don't know why. It's bizarre. And yeah, I think that would be the 135th issue because, well, yeah, the actually 136 because you have the five issue mini series of Life of Captain Marvel, and of course you have this series. For some reason, it's not there. I don't know why. This this is the other book I got signed by Danny Cotis. Yep, I got this signed by him. This is one of the books I picked up. Secret Warriors Volume 1, Nick Fury, Agent of Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I love Secret Warriors, and I love Hickman's work. I can't wait to get the other trades for that. I did see Volume 2 there, but I said it passed, and I thought I'd get that next Magal Comic Con where I can order at some point. I also got Original Sin... Thor and Loki, the Tenth Realm. I believe it or not, I also did see at this. I think it was at the same booth. I did see, believe it or not, my friend Edgar's least favorite Iron Man comic, Iron Man Ver original sin, Iron Man versus Hulk. I saw this there at the same booth, but I picked this instead because I love Jason Aaron Thor. I also got Inhuman Volume Three Lineage. This book, I actually picked up another copy thing by purely mistake. The Mort's Iron Fist, Book 3, uh, The Mort's Iron Fist, Volume 3, The Book of Iron Fist. I'll probably review this in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also got the first volume for this series. Genesis, but now I have all three volumes released for this series. Yeah, this was a damn good series. Just too bad they got canceled. It was really good. It's a good story, too. New Avengers Volume 5, which is, this is actually the end of Brian Michael Bendis' run for New Avengers. A run that started back in 2005. This is the finale for it. I don't own many trades for Brian Michael Bendis' run for New Avengers, but I'm hoping to get more in the future. The first volume of Guardians of the Galaxy... By Dan Abbott and Andy Lending, which has the first 12 issues of the series. I can't wait to review these things later on in the future. I don't want to read them. Just get nervous. World War Hulk. Yeah, that's the trade that collects the initial miniseries. Very underrated event, and I do agree about the... Now, I actually, believe it or not, I still had the promotion promotional card for this event. Yeah, I got this thing like roughly like a little over 10 years ago. And it's basically a checklist of everything that came up for this. I've read a majority of this event so far, except for the Gamma Core miniseries, which half the miniseries wrapped up the characters never seen again until they popped up for an issue of Hulk Volume 3 by Mark by uh, Gary Duggan. DC slash Young Animal, Milk Wars. Yeah, I could not pass on getting this because I, I love Young Animal. Mm -hmm. Oh, this cost me five dollars for a trade that initially cost nineteen ninety nine. So 
I got my money's worth for that one. This is my last purchase book, and that is Iron Fist Volume 1, The, S the Trial of the Seven Masters. Yes. <laughs> Love this run. This one was really good. Too bad it just abruptly ended. I know for a fact that after this run, after these issues ended, the series resumed its, its original legacy like, numbering for like eight issues, and then the book just ended. Now, the rest of this stuff here is all this book that got signed. This I got signed by Ryan Segman because he did one of the covers for this book. Let's see. He is... No, he's near. Here he is, right here. Yeah. Got the summer right now. Late. His signature is right there. Right above Sunspot's head. This one got signed by Buzz. Mm-hmm. Yep. This one got signed by Tyler Kirkham. Do not move. This one got signed by Clay Mann. I talked to him for quite a while, Clay Mann. Yeah, of how he didn't like doing the the Indestructible Hulk issue. Yeah, he says he didn't like doing this at all. It's his least favorite work he's ever done. And he just didn't really care for it. Yeah, this is how Clay Man draws the Hulk. I did not have a problem with this. I thought this looks really good for a Hulk. And here is his depiction of the Hulk. And apparently he didn't like this depiction at all. Yeah, he said this was too difficult for him to do. Mm -hmm. Please do not move. This also got some of Clay Man. And this is actually one of the last books he did for, for Marvel. Probably the, I think like the second last book he did for Marvel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really wanted to do X-Men. He actually enjoyed doing this, but he did not enjoy doing Hulk. Alright, the rest of the books are all signed. This one got signed by Ron Ali. Yeah, this is one of two books got signed by him. Yeah, I had him sign. Now, he signed the bearing cover, which he did do in here. Yeah, that's his cover, so he signed it. Stay, do not move. I also have him sign this. This I picked up last year for comic day, so I figured out oh, why not get to sign this. Yeah, I also talked to him a little bit about like he I talked about working with I asked him like what it was like working with Robert Kirkman. He says he really enjoyed it and he loved working on Invincible. He worked on like he told me he worked on like out of the hundred forty four issues, he penciled one hundred and twenty seven of those issues. Mm-hmm. And and I also talked about like how his artwork is very similar to how Mark Bagley's artwork is from Ultimate how he draw for Ultimate Spider Man. He actually agreed with that and he actually said that Mark Bagley was actually inspiration for how he did his art style for Spider Man. <laughs> this I got signed by the awesome Neil Adams. And yes, I had to pay fifty dollars for this thing. <laughs> Stay, do not move. And these last two books I got signed by Tyler Kirkham. Yep. This overall was a pretty good con that I went to. Mm hmm. Also, by far, the cheapest kind of action I've gone to. Yeah, the ticket for this thing was only $15. Yeah. I was surprised myself. Just for one day admission, I'm like, huh, okay. I mean, I like the price. And here's the thing about this particular con. It was not in a hotel. Well, not a hotel. It was not in a just a convention center. Yeah, it was not at the Jersey Convention Center, and it was actually at the Florida Hotel, off the inter uh, off the interstate. And it was kind of weird getting there, where taking GPS is kind of hard, especially since if you want to go there, you have to basically physically go to the actual thing itself, and the GPS for some reason took you to this 
real estate office for some. It took this investment office for some reason, and apparently everybody had this problem with their GPS. We kept directing everybody to this particular location for some reason. I do not know why. It's one of the most bizarre things. Heck, we had to go. We had to go basically around this block three times before we finally decided to go into. The Florida Hotel, which my dad said, it's because he couldn't find a parking spot, so he decided to just drop me off. I went inside, and that's that. Getting into the door. Not much of a problem there. Just. And get this. For the line for Danny Costas and Danny Coates, uh, Danny Coates and... Ryan segment. It was a long line that took up like half a hallway. It was difficult to move around this place. Mm -hmm. I got there today at roughly 11.30. I didn't finally finish up to almost 5. Now, as soon as I walked into the place, the first place I went to, like, I looked around the place. I didn't buy anything from the outside thing. Like, I did see Marcus Coppon as soon as I walked in, but I didn't say anything to him yet. So, I decided to wa wait till later to talk to him, so I did. So, like, as soon as I saw where Buzz was, because I knew I had something from the sign, so I walked up to his table, took my JSA book out, and we talked for a little while. I mean, he showed up, he had his booth, he had, like, issue 30 of Shattered Grid, and... He actually really enjoyed. He really enjoyed doing that. He 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 did he did the covers for Shatter Grit, and I do agree. Shatter Grit was really good. And surprisingly, he remembered me because I mentioned him the last time I saw him was actually at last year's San Comic Con, and he actually remembered me. Yeah, he's actually one of like two or three, at least two comic creators who actually remembers me seeing me, which is kind of weird because. I would think they see a lot of people, and I'm surprised they remember me. There's only two people who's done that to me. The other course was, off the top of my head, I think it was Greg Rucka. And I know Chuck Dexter remembers me very well, because I've seen him many times over the past. I've seen him almost as much as anybody else. Like, yeah, I've seen him roughly about three, at least about three times now. Yeah, he's a great person to talk to, and... Like, I love going to his booth when I get a chance to see Chuck Dixon. Danny Cole, Danny Cole he actually had some trades that collect some of his work. Like, like I remember it very well. Like, on top it was his Thanos trade, his, this brief Thanos run he had. And below that was Doctor Strange Damnation, the complete collection. And below that was the first trade the collectors run for Venom. Now, the Venom one was $25. Doctor Strange Damnation, that was like 40 bucks, And the Thanos one was like 20 Five, at least 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And surprisingly, Clay Man, when I got a chance to get to his table, he had like no line. Like, I was so surprised. Yeah, heck, I even talked to a couple people about it. And I was so surprised at the fact that he had no line, which is something now. Now, when I got to meet up with Tyler Kirkham, he had. I was in line for Ryan Audley, and all of a sudden he shook because I knew for like I wanted to get stuff out by him. So I, I happened to the line for him. It wasn't very long. So I got to his table pretty quickly. Like I only had to wait for like a couple of people. I talked to him for a little while, and that's why I got that print from him, which is a really good print, anyways. Now, my mother didn't like the last print I got, which is of Annie from Attack on Titan. She did not like it. She thought it was absolutely disgusting. It's a character from Attack on Titan. Yeah, and she didn't like that one at all. This one she liked because it looked a lot better. It's a really good print. And we're planning to get that framed along with the Air 2 prints I have. Though I think in the case of the uh, the one from Tekken thing, we, I probably will get that framed. But I probably won't have it seen very much. Because, well, it's not a thing to go, good, good thing to look at very well because it's basically a Titan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's also... One of the weirdest things about this place, there are two really weird things. One was the way this place was. It was like going through a maze. It's like you have one really weird looking room and you have like a go around the corner. And you have another room, which I didn't buy, I didn't buy anything in there. The other one I bought most of my stuff. The, the, the one on the right, that one looked, looked like something I would see definitely in a regular convention center. And it was 
Now, in the case of the hallway where Danny Cotis and Clayman and Dryan Sting were, that was kind of warm. That room, the other one, it was freezing cold in there. It felt like it was like 50 degrees. Yeah, it was cold. Really, really cold. Yeah, I didn't understand why where in the other room it was warm. It was hot. And in the case of the other room, it was cold. Like, I have never been in a Comic-Con where it's been like this where one area I went to is hot not like super hot, but more like hot, like warm. Like I need to take out my jacket. I had to roll up my sleeve because it got so hot. And and the big room, it was cold, like really cold. I did. I've never been to a con like this before. The in case of the room on the far left, that was a pretty decently temperature room. And I'm like, why couldn't all three rooms be like this? This makes no goddamn sense at all. And the thing about this particular location is that I, there was also a buffet that this place had. I don't know where this buffet was. I couldn't find it. So I went to the food court because this hotel was connected to a, was connected to a mall. The Florida Mall Hotel is commonly called. So I walked down and I got I got lunch from Subway, though I didn't eat about 2 o'clock because I didn't watch the time. So yeah, there's that. This overall was a good con to go to, good environment. I like the I like the people. The places I went to, people were nice to me. Now, in the case of when I got the My Hero Academia books, that was basically getting three books for twenty percent off. And both both sets I got for like twenty four bucks a piece. Though two of the now most of the places I went to, except for two, I actually paid with my, my check card. Two places I actually paid with cash, so I didn't spend everything with, with my check card. Which is good. Now, my most expensive purchase, like I said, was from New Adams. Basically paying like 50 bucks for the thing. And in the case of Michael Coppon, he was like 40 bucks for him. That was for a pitcher. Yes, a pitcher. Yeah. Next thing I pitch, I'm getting from Dub Actor. Yes. But it, it he'll, it's also the same price also for his autograph. Yeah. Now, 40 buck, that's actually not that bad for an autograph from a celebrity. Because I get kind of the reason why he was charging that much, because he's not that big of a name. If he was someone like, I don't know, like William Shatner, or, I don't know, like, probably like one, one of the big movie actors, they probably would charge a heck of a lot more. But him, 40 bucks, not bad. I at least got praise him for that. A lot of the air places, pretty much like almost every other place except for a couple of them, I pay like twenty, twenty-five dollars for the, my myself I purchased, which isn't too bad, because I was actually watching what I was purchasing because I did not want to spend too much at a particular booth. I think the highest I purchased was basically the twenty-four dollar thing, but pretty much like every other place I went to, it was roughly like twenty to pretty much like. Like I said, twenty twenty five dollars. There was one booth that paid eighteen dollars for stuff, and my lowest purchase I made was for ten dollars. That was the cheapest. That was actually my second cheapest purchase I made. The other was actually a clean man's booth where I paid five dollars for additional autograph. That was that was also the sign. That was initial trade at. Don't remember, I think it was the inhumanity trade. He actually I got him to sign. Now him, I said, hey, he's actually the one artist, one guy I talked to for quite a while. I didn't want to talk to Danny Cotis and. Ryan Tinker for too long, mainly because they had I had a line behind me, so that went to take too long. Neil Adams, the only, let's see, the only people I talked to for a while was Clay Mann, um, Marcus Capon. Neil Adams I talked to for a little while, not too long per se, and I talked to a while to Buzz. Oh yeah, I also talked to a little bit to Ryan Oddley and Tyler Kirkham. And I talked to Adam Riches as well, but I didn't get anything. I didn't buy anything from him. I didn't have anything from the sign. Yeah. We talked a little about wrestling and talked a little about Back to the Future. A little about Firefly. Adam Riches is a good artist, and I even told him I really enjoy the guy's artwork. Yeah, every single artist I met today, I told him I really enjoy the guy's artwork, and it's true. I really do enjoy him. And I was telling Danny Cotis and Clay Mann about two of their books, Making Tivia's. 
Wars comics of last year. Clay Mann was actually upset by that. He was not very happy with that particular thing happening. It was for Heroes for Crisis. And I didn't tell him that also Batman 50 made that list. We actually talked a little about the wedding. and I thought I wasn't happy about the, what happened with the book. But and I told him I was not going to send uh, Tom King death threats over the thing. Yeah. And... He did agree with me on that. I was not going to send him death threats because I think it's sending death threats is really stupid. Yeah. And we just like, we talk a little bit about Heroes for Crisis, and he did agree with me. This was also the first book with the name Crisis, it's Final Crisis. And I gave my, my business card, I gave pretty much every my, my business card that was there, except for Buzz. I didn't give him, I, didn't, I don't think I gave him one. No, I, I did give one for Denny Cotis, Ryan Sagan. I think Ryan Oddly, I think I did get, I don't think I gave him a, a business card. This guy went for Denny Cotis, Clay Mann, Neil Adams, and Ryan Stegman. Those were four, excuse me, those four I gave uh, my business card to. I also gave it to Marcus Coppon. Yeah, I gave it to him. And I gave it to one of the vendors, my business card, and that was it. I enjoy giving my business card. It's a good thing to give out. And maybe they'll get a chance to check out my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And I told the Adam's wife that every time I, I always get, whenever I get a chance to view this his particular his stuff, like I get like give me good reviews, and I put like in the hashtag in the tags for my videos that feature new Adams stuff. I always put hashtag new Adams to make sure that well get attention for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise that's really it. So I have like a few more videos I wanted to do, and that's a view of newest chapters for My Hero Academia. Yeah. Yeah, I got some of academia, and I'm doing review a new chapter for it. D. Green Man and Seven Deadly Sins. I expect to see those videos soon, okay? But here's the next video. Bye.